So hello everyone and welcome to another part of the desktop update. This time it is for December 2020 and the two big things that were expected have been released which is the composite models and the uh, small multiples. So let's go through all the updates this month and let me know at the end which one you think is the best. Only one. Let's get started. Okay guys, so the first thing in the release it is the direct query for Power BI datasets and analysis services. What this basically does is before when you were connecting to live connection models, you could not add any other source. So it was that. And if you wanted to add any other source, you have to do it, you know, in analysis services or you have to create a new data set and publish it. And that is not the case. What you can do now is that you can connect to the live uh, source and it will be converted into a direct query so you can now combine it with other sources. So this is a preview feature, so you need to you know, tick the preview box on direct query for Power BI dataset. And once you've done that, you're going to see when you connect, for example, by the way, they recommend you to test this with Power BI service sources first because the analysis service is being rolled out and it might be that when you try it, it's still not working, okay? So try with Power BI dataset. So when you connect to it, you're going to see at the bottom of the bar of Power BI Desktop, you're going to see something that says make changes. If you click in there, you're going to get a pop-up that says, hey, we're going to create a local model in order for you to be able to, you know, to combine with all the sources, do changes in the model. And if you click on there, you will get uh, another pop-up that says uh, privacy security reasons, you know, this is, okay, now if you connect this, for example, with a web page, some information might be sent to the web page in order to do the queries that you want. So you need to be aware of that data will be moved between the sources. So if that is okay for you, continue, otherwise don't, okay? So what happens basically is that you convert your live connection model to a direct query, and then you can do the same things, not really, but you could do similar things that you could do with the direct query model. Um, they say to us that we can test this following scenario. So you could connect to other sources, you know, with a Power BI source. You can create relationships between the direct query and other sources, create measures and add new columns and, you know, check that everything works well. If it doesn't, remember this is a preview feature. So just let the Power BI team know, you know, issues.powerbi.com and then they will, you know, improve this feature as it develops as time goes by, basically. Now, there are a lot of things that you need to be aware of when trying this feature out, and I'm going to mention most of them here. The first one is that when you're importing something, say, from Power BI service, and you have a table called customers, and then you import something from Excel, and it has a table called customers, there will be a conflict, so Power BI will resolve that conflict. They don't say how they resolve it, and I haven't tested yet, but I guess that it's changing the name somewhere. Also, you need to re-enter the credentials again. Even if you think that you've already authenticated, you need to verify your credentials again when doing this procedure. And role-level security will not propagate either way. So if you have a live connection data set, a Power BI, for example, Power BI service data set, with role-level security, when you import that in Power BI Desktop, it will not keep the role-level security, and the same thing goes the other way. So if you create a role-level security on the new model, it will not be propagated to the live source. So you need to be aware of They are two separate instances, and they don't talk to each other yet. And the same goes for display folders, KPIs, date, table, date tables, so you will create a copy of these in Power BI Desktop and they are, in, they are disconnected for now. So hopefully they will change that. Probably they will. More, avoid date hier hierarchies. They know there is an issue with that. And then they were talking about the filter and relationship limitations. It didn't make a lot of sense to me, but I think it's because I need to test it to see. But it was like you cannot filter uh, in two direct query sources when you have an... <laughs> I'll do a separate video about it because it really didn't make a lot of sense to me, but hopefully will once I test it out. But I'm going to post a link down below, obviously, so you can go check them out. Um, if you connect to a My Workspace dataset from Power BI service, 
it won't work or if you try to connect it won't work so don't try basically power bi embedded is not supported yet uh, calculation groups are not supported wrong query results you can get wrong query results if you have a calculated table with a direct query source they don't say why or how that happened so avoid calculated tables for now until we know more about that and the sort order is by column is not supported and automatic page refresh is just supporting some sources they didn't say which one they said that the apr page documentation page says which ones they are so go and check that out so again this is the first preview of this functionality make sure you check them out and you give them feedback as to what works what doesn't work and they will continue developing it i think that this is a very important feature because the ability to share data sets in from especially from the Power BI service, you know, when you were importing those, they, they, you couldn't connect with anything else, which makes the shareability limited. So this is a, actually a great feature. Test it out and again, give feedback. So we go to the next one, which is small multiples. And small multiples is just a visualization that is quite popular in, you know, any business intelligence scenario where you want to visualize, for example, now with the COVID, there's been quite many visualizations where you can see the infections per country side by side. So you have the country in multiple places. So this is a really neat, timely update for this visual to come. Seriously. So preview feature, you have to tick the box to do it. It is available on bar, line and area chart. There will be added to more visuals, but for now, those are the ones. And when you drop it in, the canvas, it will do a two by two grid, but you can expand it to six by six. Now here's a big part. <laughs> if you have bigger than six by six, it will add scroll bars. I'm not a huge fan of scroll bars on BI visuals. I really don't like them at all. So you will get scroll bars both on the X axis if you have a lot of categories and on the Y axis if you have a lot of charts. So yeah, no, not, not ideal. So hopefully they will change that. It's not a great experience. Sorted, the sorting of the visuals will be alphabetically left to right, top to bottom. Okay, so if you're in Asian countries, I'm not sure how that is going to work for you, but probably they will add the functionality later. And um, if you want to sort the categories on the model, you know, you have the normal sorting ability, but if you want to sort it in any other way, you have to do it, they send in the model, which I think they mean that you have to take the sort by model field and do the sort by column. And that will probably change the sort order, just so you're aware of that. Now there's going to be only one Y axis, and then there's going to be multiple X, Y axis, so you can read them properly. And the cross filtering behavior is what you would expect. So you can, if you click on a data point, it will filter out everything, cross filter everything. If you click on a category, when it's a categorical um, label, it will also cross filter everything. And then you can click also in the title of the small multiple and it will cross filter everything, which is fabulous. Great. Now limitations. Data will be converted to categories which to a categorical axis, which basically means that data are not supported. Show items with no data might, might result in unexpected results. I don't know what that means, actually. It, it, they basically said, wrote that it might not behave as you might expect. Po point, full, full stop. So I, no, I don't know what it means, to be honest, and I haven't tested either, so be careful with that and don't use it. If you have to use it, use another visual. <laughs> that would be my recommendation. More, if you have too many X categories in the X axis, they will not show. So it was a bit contradicting what they say in the beginning, that if you have too many X categories, they will do a scroll bar. So I'm guessing that you will ha get a scroll bar until a number, defined number, and then after that, they won't show or more you know, in other BI tools, you get a load more. There's no load more for now. So be aware of that. Don't use it with too many categories because it won't show. And that could be misleading. Um, analyzed, you know, analyze by display the increase, increase the analyze pain, the summarize, let's select the new zoom thing, um, access zooms. 
none of that works. So they are planning to add it, but for now, none of that works. Okay, so but it is a preview feature, so let's give them some time to get everything sorted out. So again, this is a very, very timely feature, especially for any COVID reporting. Obviously, there are other types of reporting that use this type of feature, but that has been definitely needed for comparing the situation between countries. So I think it is a timely update for to, to get this out. Um, moving on to other types of updates, we have a data protection sensitivity label. So this has been available in Excel for the longest time. They're adding it to Power BI. So you can add sensitivity labels to the Power BI report, the entire report, and they will be respected throughout the chain to Power BI surveys, when you export to Excel and all that kind of stuff. So that's good. Uh, the selection, selection pane is now available when you are creating mobile reports on Power BI desktop. Okay. So that's a great feature if you want to change the layering and then, you know, do all that type of stuff that you do normally on the desktop. That's great. Automatic page refresh is now available for Azure analysis services and SQL analysis services. So that's great. When it comes to Power Query updates, they have now, which I think is absolutely fabulous, they have now added a link to the official release from the Power Query team, which is great because now we can get everything. So you can now go to the link and you will get all the updates for data flows and Power Query. And I went there, I check it out and they haven't released anything new from the last update. So I'm going to post a link down below to the video where I explain all the things that they release. This is a great, great release. Make sure you have it, check it out if you haven't checked it out already. And I really hope they continue to do this. I really appreciate to have everything in one place instead of having Power BI service updates here, Power Query service, you know, Power Query updates there, Power BI desktop. Just put them in one place so we can all, you know, see what it is. You summarized. So great, great, great. Now for the Power BI service, they have are also adding the updates, which is great. And I'm going to give you the highlights, which is admins will now have the possibility to add a custom message when the users are publishing something to the Power BI reports to the Power BI service. And the custom message is added on the admin page on the Power BI service. Okay, so you can write anything that you want to inform your users about when publishing to the service, which is great. And you will have more granularity when specifying how people can export data from the Power BI service. Before it was a big on off button. Now it is, it allows you to control how you do with CSV, how you do with Excel, how you do it, right? So if you're an admin, go and check that out because it will give you more control. When it comes to updates on the mobile, there is a dark mode. I know you guys are waiting for the dark mode for the desktop, but for now you'll have to wait. It is a dark mode for the mobile. So if you remove the user, you will set it up in the mobile. You have to activate it there and then you will be able to see dark reports, which is nice. I remember there was an issue with dark reports, dark backgrounds before when you have like white space, but I don't know if that's true. Just check it out and let them know if there is any issues. And there is a huge update for Power BI Embed. A lot of things have happened. They are going to give you the possibility to change the position of the navigation for the Power BI reports, which is great. You have now the possibility to add the Power BI service action bar, so you can have all these edit and, you know, save and all that kind of stuff in the embed version. You will be able to show or hide bookmarks pane programmatically. You will be able to add persistent fil filters, which is basically when your users go and filter things, Power BI is in this case, the embedded version will remember the filter set by the user. So it was a cookie and remember that. And then you will be able to add the personalized views. So your users will be able to personalize the views that you created in their report. And there is a new Q&A experience, you know, the possibility to ask questions to your data using natural language. So if you're using Power BI embed, this is actually a great update lots of tiny but really cool small improvements okay so this is all actually so let me know which one only one is your favorite please only one because i i, I have a theory i will talk to you about it on monday maybe but it would be really interesting to know which one of all of these are your favorite 
for me is gotta be the small multiples i guess you can guess it if you've been following me for a while so i will see you hopefully on friday i'm a little bit tied up with work but hopefully on friday otherwise i will see you definitely on monday so take care enjoy your day <laughs>